So in this video, I'm gonna give you the top 10 things that I think you need to carry out in order to kind of guarantee yourself the highest marks in A-level physics. Now, the first step is you need to read the specification. This is produced by the exam board. It's always on their website and it goes through in a, a huge amount of detail about exactly what you need to know. So you need to read it, you need to highlight it. And if you're doing OCR specification A, I've got some documents on my website which will help you. But basically, this has to be the thing that you check that you're doing the right work and you're revising the right content. So number one is the specification. Number two is you need to read your textbook. Now, I suspect you'll have probably carried a textbook around in your bag and you might have read it a while ago, but basically read the whole textbook again and then read another textbook. And then if you can read another one. The more books that you read, even though the physics is exactly the same inside it, the more different opinions you get, the better you're going to understand it. So, you know, this one here uh, is quite an old book and it doesn't have all the physics you need. It's got uh, no colorful diagrams, no pictures, but the physics inside it is absolutely brilliant. This one here, okay, it covers the same physics as the other book over here, but again, it's a different author and the way that they present the data is slightly different. And by seeing more than one viewpoint, it really helps you. So you'll all have one physics textbook. I know there'll be an old one perhaps in the library at school, or perhaps there's a huge amount on the shelves in your physics classroom. So speak to your teachers and see what they recommend. Number three is to make your own notes. Now the textbooks are very good and they present all the information in a very clear way. But what you've got to do is kind of take this information in and summarize it to the best of your ability. What you want to be doing is as you make your own notes, this is kind of where you really process that information, you know, perhaps something on uh, refraction. It's a big diagram here. How can you simplify it? How can you get it down to just exactly what you need? And once you've done that, can you simplify it even further? Eventually, I feel that you can get the whole of A2 physics or the whole of A-level physics onto one side of A3 with the, the most sort of key important points. So you need to make your own notes and that's how you really start to learn this work. Now, number four are the definitions. You'll find out from the specification exactly which definitions you need to know and you need to get them word perfect in as few words as possible. There's absolutely no excuse to get any of these wrong. There's only probably maybe 20, 30 definitions for each exam. And you know, if a, if a four-year-old child can learn a nursery rhyme, why is it that you can't learn some of these definitions? This is kind of the pure basic kind of rote learning. So find out the definitions you need to know, write them out and then just learn them. Absolutely no excuses. Number five are the derivations. For example, at A level, you might at uh, year 13, you might need to sort of show that T squared is proportional to R cubed. When you do AS physics, maybe you need to derive the SUVAT equations from first principle. Basically, that anything that you get asked to derive in the exam, it will tell you exactly what you need to do in the specification. This one here might be worth three marks, but I know that you can derive that in 40 seconds. And if you practice it and practice it and practice these, again, just like the definitions, you just know them. So there's absolutely no excuse to get any derivations of equations wrong in the exam. Now, number six is all about practical experiments. It's a practical subject. It's not just like mathematics. And there are certain experiments that you need to be able to describe. You know, what are the significant limitations? When you take, you know, maybe you're measuring the extension of a spring, what errors could be introduced and how do you reduce those? Also, what are the kind of measurements that you do take and then does that kind of fit a graph? Does a gradient mean something? So practical experiments, again, you can find these in a specification and for each one you need to have, you know, you need to be able to answer like a six mark question describing what you do. Number seven is all about long answer questions. And this is kind of the thing that uh, most of you kind of tend to struggle with. Mathematics is fairly straightforward. It's not easy, but you kind of, people tend to like the mathematical questions, but there will be long answer questions. There will be things that ask you to describe certain experiments or you know what people did in terms of certain experiments. Maybe, especially this is what happens really more in year 13, you know, describe the life cycle of a star, describe how medical things work. Again, there's only so much you can be asked on, and this is something that you can practice writing down in bullet points. You do that, you're gonna get a lot better. Number nine is questions. Basically, you have a textbook which is absolutely full of questions, on often the bottom of each page at the end of each chapter. So, do the questions. But then, at some point, you're gonna get bored of these, you'll run out, and this is when you need another source. I've been using Isaac Physics with my students and I think this is excellent. In the book itself, there are hundreds and hundreds of questions that you can basically uh, mark as you kind of go online. But the website as well has another kind of three or 400 at least questions on there that will really, really challenge you. 
If you want to get an A star, I recommend you do as much of this as possible because this is a lot more testing than what you're, get, than what you're going to get in the exam. The stuff there that I've got absolutely no idea how to do because uh, it is, you know, it is hard, it is tricky, and if you keep working at this, that will really kind of get you that A star grade. There are other things that you can use. Um, often there's things online. There are apps, for example, things like Gojimo, and uh, on this app here, what you have then is, you know, another kind of 300 questions often kind of multiple choice, but you can just go through these question after question. And again, that will just kind of help you practice. So at some point, you've got to spend the time doing questions. Now, number nine are the past papers. Now, past papers, you must treat them as if they're super, super special. Think of them as perhaps some kind of sort of fine whiskey that you'd save for a special occasion. Now, you wouldn't be drinking the finest Scotch whiskey just every day during the week. You save it for a birthday, an anniversary, something like that. It's the same with your past papers, okay? These are not the kind of things that you just use as you start your revision. These are what you need to keep until the very last possible moment, because once they're gone, they're gone, and there's only so many of them around. When you do them, do them under exam conditions, okay? Don't look for help in your book. Get rid of your distractions like your mobile phone, and also really kind of time yourself. If it's a one mark question, that's one minute. Three marks, three minutes. If you don't get it done, move on, okay? The past papers, uh, again, there's links in beneath the video that really kind of show you where a lot of these are. But this is the kind of thing that you need to kind of save for special. And that will really give you the best indication of how you're getting on. But don't waste it, just like you don't waste the kind of finest drinks uh, during the middle of the week. And finally, number 10, you've got to relax. You've got to remember it is only an exam. It's only A-level physics. It's not the end of the world. But the thing is, you can relax by basically working hard now before it gets to the exams. And the more you practice, especially doing question after question after question, the more confident you'll feel. But basically, go into the exam, knowing that you've done everything that you can, and it will go, the, go, go your way. Uh, so basically, hopefully, uh, that kind of helps going from reading the specification, looking at all the textbooks in at least two, making your own notes, which are as concise as possible, uh, definitions, make sure that you're word perfect and know all of the derivations. Then you need to make sure that all the practical experiments you can describe, you practice some of the long answer questions in bullet points. You do question after question after question, saving your past paper questions till the very end. And finally, if you've done all of that, then you can relax. You've done everything you can and you will do very, very well this summer. So I hope that helps. Uh, let me know any other things that you think really help in the comments below this video. Thank you very much.